This video is going to help you immediately become much better at Survivor when you play Survivor for the first time, or if you played a couple of matches already. One of the things you might be wondering right away is, who do I pick who's a good character? I believe that all of them have their own thing that they can be good at, but right now, while people are still really learning the game, really good picks include Cheryl, because she provides the ability to heal the whole team, and right now people are still trying to figure out how to find items, how to find Shemp's Cola, and she can make it so more people heal with Shemp's Cola. Another really good character right now is Evil Dead 2 Ash under the Hunter class. Reason being is that his special ability causes an exorcism out of the possessed creature. So if the demon goes ahead and takes over a skeleton or takes over a teammate or takes over whatever, you can go ahead, press your Q at the creature, and then it'll just stop being possessed, which also hurts the demon and makes it so your teammate doesn't do as much damage, doesn't waste their ammo, etc., etc. So right away when you load in, what should you even be doing? What should you be looking for? First thing you should do is take a look at the top right-hand corner of the map. It tells you what your objective is. So currently it is collect pieces of the map, and we need to collect the piece of the map near dead end. So where's dead end? If you press M on your keyboard, you can look at your map, and you'll find a little area here that's called dead end. So what we need to do first Check is go map. over to this I area and find the map piece. Something you may have noticed is that I can ping um, I can the area. And then if you go ahead and take a look, I'll actually have a ping outside of my map that I can go ahead and follow so I don't have to keep my map up and know exactly where I'm going, which is really, really helpful. Another cool part about the map to know is that you can continuously ping. So sometimes what I like to do is like, let's say I'm with a teammate and we're trying to drive down this road. So if we're up here, I can ping right here, and then I can ping right here. Then if we need to take a left turn, I can ping over this way so that they know that we need to keep going this direction. It's a really nice way to guide your teammates if they're driving and you're sitting in the passenger seat. Now at the top of the screen, you'll have something that catches your eye right away. You have the timer, and then you have these gray icons. These gray icons are your objectives. The first one is collect the map pieces. Kind of looks like a map. So if we were to go ahead and go to dead end and collect a map piece, you'll see one of these light up. So let me go ahead and do that. Ow! You dumb tree. But something we might want to do before we go on over to dead end right away is pick up some items around us. So if you go ahead and go into a building, there's going to be a ton of stuff for you to pick up. So I just found myself a sword. There's going to be ammo laying around here. By the way, ammo is not going to automatically pick up until you have a weapon. And then the ammo type that you have will automatically be picked up. So if I find a handgun, I'm automatically going to pick up handgun ammo, but I'm not going to automatically pick up shotgun ammo, so you have to manually pick that up, okay? You hear that glowing sound? That means there's a loot case nearby, and you really want to pay attention to those, because that's how we're going to upgrade our character. So we actually have one right here, so we can open it up. Now, sometimes these can be trapped, but don't worry. <laughs> They're not always going to be trapped. And sure enough, what we found was a hunting rifle, which is nice because it didn't have a gun yet. But we also have these little pink bottles that come out of here called Pink F, right? And these are a really, really if big deal shoot, for the survivors. So you automatically pick them up by walking over them. And then what these do is these allow you to upgrade your character. So if I press tab, you'll see a list of upgrades that I can have. Now, every survivor has a different list of how far these upgrades can go. Cheryl's a support, so they don't get really beefy, but on something like, I believe, Ash 2, he goes ahead and gets a lot of ranged. And I'm assuming some of the characters like Henry get a lot of melee, all right? So go ahead and pay attention to these and you'll be able to upgrade your character accordingly. Now, something you should know about these pink F bottles, other than that they help you upgrade your character like this, is that everybody on the team can get them. Just because you pick them up does not mean that they're gone. Everybody has their own instanced version of the pink F. So if you find one of these crates, you should mark and let people know that you found it because that is going to help them find the pink F to upgrade themselves. Something that is helpful is if you take a look at your minimap, you can find where more cars are. So if your car is getting beat up or if you're just trying to find one in general, okay, I could run you over. Actually, we can back up this one too. It'll help you find cars so you can quickly traverse the map. But something to know about driving a car is that it lets the demon know where you are if you're in a regular match. So driving a car early, I'm not sure is always the best play because the demon knows exactly where to pounce, which can make your life really hard for the rest of the match. There is something nice about just walking around rather than driving everywhere. You get to maintain your stealth. So once you're in the area of where the map could be, you're gonna get the little red exclamation point. So you can just walk right up to it and collect the map piece. And then what you'll see on the top of the screen is our objectives are going to update. So here's a map piece. Gonna collect it. And ta-da, lit Survivors up. Survivors have acquired the first piece of the map. Take heart. Also, what you'll notice is the top right-hand corner is going to change. It's going to give us a new location. So you know exactly where you need to go for this first chunk, which is a great 
great thing for you. Now we need to go on over to the Royal Oak Cemetery so I can mark over there. And there's so much chaos going on down here. And then ta-da, we can just go walk over that direction. Now to give you a brief idea of what all these objectives are, you just saw that we collected a map piece and now we need to collect two more, right? Well, once we collect those two map pieces, we can move on to the next set of objectives. And that includes finding the lost pages of the Necronomicon, but then also find the Kandarian Dagger. Those will be two separate areas on the map. They're very eventful. There's gonna be a lot of things spawning at you. But once you get those done, then you can move on to the dark ones, which are the creepy dudes in the robes. And then after that, you defeat the dark ones. You have to protect the Necronomicon because the demon player is going to try to destroy it. So the way it goes is find the three map pieces. Then you can find the dagger and the lost pages of the Necronomicon. And then you can destroy the dark ones. And then you can go ahead and protect the book from the demon in that order. Once you do all those things, you win. If you don't find the map pieces and then also the Necronomicon pages and the dagger before that timer goes up, you auto lose. But once you get those three things done, the timer disappears and then it starts having a circle form around you that closes in on you battle royale style. Okay, the timer disappears after the pages and the dagger are done. So those are arguably some of the most important things to know about the game right away to get you started. So let's take a look at the bottom left hand corner because there's a lot of really important information down there. Actually, real quick tip if we're going to do combat, you see that F? Anytime you get a chance to press that, you should press it. Reason being is it does a powerful attack on the thing that you're attacking, but also when you're in that animation, you get iframes. You are literally invincible to the demon. So if they try to hit you or shoot you or do whatever, you're invincible. So anytime you get an opportunity to press F, make sure you do it. So now bottom left-hand corner, let's go through this information. We have a bunch of different bars down there. We have our shield bar, our health bar, our fear bar, and our stamina bar. So let's talk about the stamina bar here. So the stamina bar is for things like sprinting and for dodging, and it's immediately underneath my character's portrait. So if you go ahead and you take a look, you see how that just disappeared and now it's gonna regenerate a little bit? That's my stamina bar. And you can upgrade your stamina with pink Fs right here. Now let's go from the top down here. I'm gonna press three because what that's gonna do is it's gonna let me use an amulet to provide myself a shield. And what you'll see is it's gonna light up blue. So anytime you press three, it's going to add to your shield until you're at max shields. So in this case, I'm already at max shields, but if I were to go ahead and click shields over in here with my pink Fs, I'd be able to get another shield bar if I wanted it. And I can actually do that as an example here. If I click shield here, you see I get another shield bar capacity. I can press three again. I make another amulet pop and now I have more shields. Now, something to note here. I know I was gonna talk about from the top down and talk about our health, but you see that red bar on Scotty right now? That means he's able to be possessed. If it's bright red, that means Scotty's in danger and the demon can possess him. That little icon that's pulsing on the red bar, that's the threshold for where he can be possessed. So you want to keep it lower than that if you can. So what we need to do is bring him to a light source or have somebody on the team who's really good at reducing fear. Now, if we stand next to this light source right here, it will eventually go down, but it works really well if you ignite a campfire or a lamp or something like that. Also, Scotty keeps running away from the light. Scotty, don't run away from the light. All right, so now you can see that Scotty's fear has gone down a little bit. He's still in a very dangerous place, but he can no longer be possessed. Now, let's talk about this orangish bar that you see on Scotty and Annie. That is their health. Now, in particular with Cheryl here, I can go ahead and heal them by pressing my Q. So if I do this, everybody on the team is going to get a little bit of healing, which you can see right now. This is part of the reason why Cheryl is so nice, because she gives everybody a huge heal. Another thing that Cheryl does is she makes it so when she drinks a Shemp's Cola, everybody on the team is going they to heal as well. Yet, so... Cheryl's insane and she's very resource efficient, which is a really big deal because especially early in this game here when people are learning it, people are really bad with the resources. So Cheryl provides a really big boost to a brand new team. Now, speaking of items, if you press I, you actually can look at your inventory <laughs> and you can drop things if your teammates need them. So let's say I have somebody on the team who has a handgun. Well, I can go ahead and drop some handgun ammo here and they can pick it up. Or let's say somebody on the team is really good at using shemps. Like let's say I'm not Cheryl, but somebody else is. I can give Cheryl a couple of shemps because she heals the whole team with it. I only heal myself. May as well give it to her, right? So don't forget, you can drop items for your teammates, which is very helpful. Oh, and they took it. Oh my God, you're a robot. Don't, no, hey, you're a bot. Don't take my stuff. <laughs> and then finally, in terms of UI, let's cover the bottom right-hand corner. Really what this is, it shows you your weapon. So I have a sword and then I also have a gun. So I, oh my God, what is wrong with my hand? Oh my Lord. Oh, am I okay? I think, I think I'm okay. Oh God, very scary. So my hand's a little, oh my God, Cheryl, are you okay? <laughs> anyway, so I have my flashlight by pressing one. 
The flashlight will eventually run out if you leave it on forever. And once it's gone, there's no more batteries that you can find. So use it sparingly, I guess. But at the same time, really all it does is light up items for you that you can find anyway. So it's more of a nice to have. The second item is my Shemp's Cola. I have two more Shemp's Cola, which I can use. The third item is Amulets, which is how I got that shield before. And then the fourth item there is actually your Pink F. It lets you know if you have any Pink F remaining. So you can come into here and then spend them if you want to spend them. And then the little two right there with the match is how many matches I have, which is really nice if you find an air. What is wrong with Cheryl? <laughs> I'm so broken right now. Which is really nice if you want to go find a light source and remove some fear from you or your teammates. Help, my arm's broken. Ah! So I backed out because things are a little chaotic at that point of the game if you wait too long and do nothing while you're talking about stuff. But it gives me a good opportunity to go ahead and tell you that you can unlock more survivors. If you click into missions here, what you'll see is you have a list of story missions that you can do. And something to know about these story missions is that you can unlock characters. Because if you take a look at this one right here, this third one, it says rewards Amanda Fisher and Nobi recording. So you can unlock Amanda Fisher as a survivor. You can unlock Pablo as a survivor. You can unlock Lord Arthur as a survivor. If you completed this first one, you actually unlock Evil Dead Ash 1. And Evil Dead Ash 1 is a really nice support character because he... For one, can heal your team anytime he nails a heavy attack, which is great for your economy. Also, he makes it so that he can reduce the fear of everybody on your team with an aura, kind of like Cheryl's aura does. Which is really helpful because demons that already know what they're doing are utilizing fear in a really powerful way. So Evil Dead Ash 1 is a really good way to mitigate that. Now I loaded in as Evil Dead 2 Ash, and I want to show you what I was talking about before with the pink Fs you'll see that these are different per character. So Evil Dead 2 Ash can have a lot of range, so he can have a lot of stamina, so he's really good at dodging and he's really good at shooting stuff, right? <laughs> very good at dodging, very annoying when you're playing Demon. <laughs> but he also has less HP and less melee capabilities. So as you become more familiar with the game, as a demon, you'll be able to learn who you should target, why you should target them, but also this gives you a little bit of who do I want to play when I'm playing Survivor. Some things to know about keeping your fear down, I probably should cover that. Things to keep your fear down. If you stay next to your teammates, your fear will stay lower. There's an aura effect around everyone, so making sure you stay close to everybody on your team is a really big deal. Splitting up early is terrible for you for so many reasons. A really big tip I have if you're going to go ahead and play Survivor and you want to get good at Survivor is to play at least a match or two of demons so you can understand how they work and understand how their economy works. By the way, that move means that the demon's right next to us. But something to know about the demons is that they can see you if your fear climbs too high. And as the demons upgrade, it only gets easier, okay? So doing anything you can to keep your fear low is really good at keeping your stealth early game. So it gives you more time to loot without having to deal with the demons BS. Also, this one's kind of a pro tip here, which you'll catch on if you start to play a little bit more of the game, is one of the things the demon can do is possess your car, right? So he possesses the car, you all get shot out of the car like this, and oh no, it's driving away. Something to know, especially if this happens early game, that's actually really good for you. Because the way the demon works is he uses up infernal energy, which he has to accumulate by zipping around the map. If he goes ahead and controls your car, that's a very expensive thing for the demon to do. So if you see a demon doing that early, that's a really good sign that one, they don't really know what they're doing. Two, they just used up a lot of their energy early to go ahead and try to do something that isn't really going to give them a whole lot of value. So that means you have a nice opening to go ahead and continue to loot or accomplish your objective, yada, 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 because the demon just spent all their energy, their money, basically. Oof. You see that right there? We're going up against the puppeteer. If you go up against the puppeteer, make sure you kind of back up after you kill one of their minions because or one of their deadites, because they self-destruct and they cause damage. So again, if you see Puppeteer, it's the creepy alien-looking dudes, just run away as soon as you kill one of them, because they're going to self-destruct and hurt you. Now, I just picked up a sledgehammer, which is really good at stumbling, which you just saw like that. So anytime you stumble something, again, you can press F to do one of those finisher moves or one of those really big combo moves. Now, I want to repeat it. This is one of the most powerful things you can do as a survivor, because it gives you invincibility frames or iframes which means you're not going to take damage from anything. You're not going to get pushed around. You're just this walking beacon section. of damage and Surely destruction. I good. highly recommend you really use your F as much as you can. Oh, actually, here's the dark ones right here. <laughs> They're always on the map. Oh, God, don't hit my car. So these are the guys you'll run to after you complete the map finding and then also the dagger and the pages. So just so you know what they look like. <laughs> 
Now, there's a few final things I want to cover here because I don't want to go into too much detail about all the different things because I feel like that'd be a little overwhelming for an introductory video. So if you want to see more advanced stuff, make sure you subscribe down below. But let's go ahead and cover some very important things that the game just does not talk about at all. <laughs> so one of which is these altars. <laughs> this is a huge part of the game and there's just nothing in the tutorial. So if you go ahead and you take a look at your map, you'll see little icons that look like, actually, let me get away here so you can see it a little bit better, but they look like little wispy things, right? So, you know what, they're going to stand on top. But they look like these things right here. This thing. This is a revival altar. <laughs> you can revive your teammates, all right? So, if there's a situation where your teammate completely dies, I'm not talking about when they go down and they're bleeding out and you pick them back up. I'm talking they're completely dead. Blech. So, what you can do in that situation, you, you can walk up and pick up their soul. And then if you pick up their soul, that allows you to run over to one of these revival areas or these altars, put them on the flat area of the altar, because I swear, sometimes I see people like, I don't know, how do I do it on this rock? This rock's not working. It's because that's not the rock you use. You use this rock right here, and then you can revive your teammates, okay? And once you use a revival altar, you can use it again. It's not just used up. So just right keep now. bringing people over here. Keep mind. shuffling them over here as they keep dying, okay? Oh, and by the way, you see how my fear's up and I might get possessed? Well, this is where Ash's Q is really, really nice if you have evil that Ash one. See how my fear just went down? Oh, super nice. Another really important thing to talk about is the threat level of the demon. Again, if you play demon, you'll understand a lot more stuff about this game, but you can see the threat level of the demon on the bottom of your screen. You see a little one with the evil eyes? Something to know about threat levels is level 10 is when the demon unlocks their boss. So you don't have to worry about Eligos or Evil Ash or Henrietta coming to get you until level 10, all right? So you can plan your strategy around that a little bit as you become more comfortable with the game and start to understand the flow of it a little bit better. And then one final really important thing to know that I actually didn't know for a little while here is if you start exploring through your menu, you're eventually going to go, oh, is this where I go ahead and upgrade my characters? This is kind of cool. Let me go ahead and click. And if you play your characters, you are naturally going to go ahead and just level them up. So I played a match as Cheryl, I played a match as Evil Dead Ash, I've been playing a lot of Demon here, and they're just gradually leveling up, right? They will do that on their own. But something to know is that you can speed this up a lot by using these spirit points that you have. If you take a look in the top right hand corner, you see it says 131,000. That means I actually have a lot of these to spend and you earn these every single time you play the game. So. If you go ahead into here, it says spend spirit points. What you'll see is if I start doing that, this little meter down here is going to go up. So I can actually level up Cheryl just by holding this button down. And you see how I used up, I don't know, about 20,000 points there, but I got Cheryl up to level five. So I can go ahead and spend a bunch of points in here now. Don't forget that you can do that. Very quick way to fast track one of your characters to get a bunch of upgrades in. So now I can go ahead and put this on Cheryl and I don't know, I just click a bunch of these. And it doesn't really matter if you click them because you can always right click them and get rid of them. So there's no real high stakes here. Okay, so and actually let me go ahead and get to this side of the screen so you can see it so I can go ahead and click all these and upgrade stuff yada 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 and then unclick it do all that. Okay, cool. If you want to learn a little bit more about Demon, I'm going to be doing another video where it's things you can do immediately to get yourself better at playing Demon. I'd love to have you guys join this community. We go really deep in games like this. We've covered Friday the 13th. We've covered a lot of Resident Evil Resistance, which is what this game is basically like. We have covered a lot of Back for Blood. We did a lot of Dead by Daylight back in the day. We're very familiar with this scene. So I'd love to have you guys here. I'd love to teach you a lot more about the game. And again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video that we do around here.